Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan Mathias, and today we are discussing the real estate crash of 2021. Is it a real thing? Is it going to happen? Because we're seeing economists predict anything from a massive boom to a 40% decline in prices in the Canadian real estate market this year, which is the reality. Who's right? Well, we're going to talk about that in today's video, but before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video and leave me your comments in the comment section below. What do you think is going to happen in the real estate market? Are you worried? Or are you excited about the future in 2021? Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the pending real estate crash or the crash that many are predicting, especially if you go and look at my silver and gold video that I recently did. There is a lot of people predicting that things are going to get really bad in the economy. And well, I don't necessarily see it. And there's a few reasons why. And today, that's what I want to talk about is my thoughts on the pending real estate crash and why I don't think it's necessarily something that we should be concerned with, because there's a few things that are going to continue to prop up the real estate market in Canada, namely consumer confidence, the housing price increases being proportional to what we would expect with the amount that interest rates have gone down and the large number of people taking deferrals that dis didn't necessarily need to because of the pandemic. And I'm going to talk about all three of those things in this video and explain why I don't think that you need to worry about a real estate market crash in 2021, at least with the data that we have as of today. Okay, so let's start with consumer confidence. I like to use Nanos Research, which is a research company based out of Ontario that basically measures consumer confidence at different intervals throughout the year. Actually, what they do is on a weekly basis, they survey 250 Canadians from across Canada, and then they run a a monthly tally of a thousand Canadians and basically they use this to determine what consumer confidence looks like in different markets and the one that I think is important and the one I'm going to look at today at least for the Canadian real estate market is the one with respect to how people feel about their finances compared to a year ago and right now as of today 25% of Canadians feel like they are worse off than they were a year ago now that seems like it is an incredibly high number but if you go back to December of 2019, pre-pandemic, and you look at the exact same numbers, guess what? There was exactly 25% of Canadians who felt like they were worse off than they were a year prior. Now, that is pretty much standard for Canada. About a quarter of people at any given time think that they're worse off than they were a year prior. And this number pre-pandemic was you know, around 25%. And when the pandemic hit in March, April, May, it got to as high as 42% of Canadians thinking that they were worse off than they were the year prior. And that was a huge number. That was higher than it had, has been in quite a long time. But since May, that number has come back and it's come back to normal range. So as of right now, Canadians think that they are in a fairly similar, similar position to what they were a year ago, which is a good thing, especially for the real estate market. And the reason why is because this indicates that the number of people that feel like they're financially stressed is about the same as it was in previous years. Um, in fact, our experience is that many people right now feel like they're in a better position than they were a year ago. This is because a lot of them have taken deferrals, they've lowered their payments, they're spending less, and as a result, they're in a financially better position than they were um, pre-pandemic because basically what we had was a forced financial reset with these lockdowns and what people realized was that they were spending too much and they found ways to spend less because they didn't have the options to and that has led to a significantly better financial picture for a lot of Canadians and when you look at things like less spending on things like dining out and buying consumer goods what that leads to is more money for saving and more money for paying off debts which is why a lot of Canadians are feeling like they're actually better off now than they were pre-pandemic. I know for ourselves, my wife and I, we certainly feel like we are significantly better off than we were 12 months ago. Now, as far as housing prices go, CMHC predicted in May that housing prices would go down at least 19 to 29%. Now, this was based on the fact that the economy had ground to a halt. And at that time, I think this was probably a pretty valid prediction. But what we saw as things started to ease back to normal in the summer is we saw that housing prices started to actually increase. It had the opposite effect. And that was actually pretty much in line with what we would expect with the decrease in interest rates because what happened was mortgage rates went down, down about 1.4% over the course of two or, a two or three month period. And what we typically expect is what we call the 1%, 10% rule, which is for every 1% that interest rates decrease, we see a 10% increase in buying power and vice versa. For every 1% interest rates increase, we see a 10% decrease in buying power. And this is exactly what happened in the last year is we've seen interest rates go down about 1.4% and subsequently 
housing prices have gone up by about 14%. That 1%, 10% rule holds true pretty much all of the time, assuming that there's no other things going on in the market that affect buying power and basically housing prices. So really what happened in the course of the last year is interest rates have gone down and subsequently housing prices have gone up accordingly. And while there's been an increase in unemployment, it hasn't really been the type of employment that affects homeowners because the people who are being affected by the pandemic from an employment standpoint are typically people who work in tourism or in restaurants, in industries that don't typically see high home ownership levels. And as a result, that has basically allowed the real estate market to stay pretty much exactly where it's at or get better. And even for those homeowners who have been affected by the pandemic, Government programs have basically allowed them to maintain their income and have basically created a scenario where foreclosures aren't as high as we would expect them to be in a financial crisis. Now, Veritas has recently come out and said that they expect that there are going to be two massive supply increases in the Canadian real estate market. The first is from landlords selling properties as a result of the rental market tanking. And I don't necessarily think that this is a big risk because in order for there to be a massive amount of properties being sold, it means that there has to be a displacement of people. And where are the people gonna go? I don't think it's necessarily a huge risk that there's going to be all these sold off rental properties that are going to be left vacant. I think what may happen is you may see new investors come in and rejigging the financials of those properties so that they make more sense. Or what you may see is renters who see the opportunity to get a really good deal on the properties that they've been renting actually buying those properties. So any increase in supply, I think, will get, will get scooped up rather quickly. The second factor that they see as far as an increase in supply is an increase in supply from foreclosures uh, due to deferrals running out. And again, I think that this is probably not as big of a risk as Veritas is making it out to be. And the reason why is because the number of people who deferred their mortgages is actually not as high as people think it is when you look at it from the perspective of those who actually needed to defer as a, as a direct result of COVID. So let's take a look at those numbers. So it's clear that 16% of homeowners in Canada have deferred their mortgage payments at some point in the last 12 months. That number is undisputed. What is disputed is the reason why they actually did it. And here's the thing, less than half of the people who have deferred their mortgage payments in the last 12 months have done it as a direct result of not being able to make their payments due to COVID. And here's how the numbers break out. 18% of people deferred their payments because of unrelated reasons. So who knows, maybe there was medical issues, maybe there was just the opportunity to defer mortgage payments. Who knows why, but for reasons unrelated to COVID directly. 27% of people took precautionary measures and deferred their mortgage payments because much like CMHC predicting that there was going to be a 19% drop in housing prices, they saw this as a potential problem that was could affect them financially and therefore they took a deferral in order to make sure that they were prepared for the worst case scenario. Now obviously the worst case scenario didn't pan out. 5% took deferments in order to pay off other debts. So in other words, deferred their mortgage payments to pay off credit cards, car loans, lines of credit that were at higher interest rates. I think that is probably one of the smart moves. And 6% for other reasons. Who knows what the other reasons are, but 6% for reasons that were undisclosed. And when they took their deferrals, they had to say why they were taking them. These are direct numbers off those deferral applications. For a total of 57% of people took deferrals for non-COVID related reasons. So basically opportunity to take deferrals and it was easier to get them than it was previously. So, you know, people saw opportunity and they took it. But what that means is that only 7% of homeowners in Canada took deferrals because of the pandemic pandemic and not being able to make their payments because of job loss due to the pandemic. So that number is relatively low. And therefore, the government subsidies combined with low interest rates are keeping the market and the economy stable. Now, here's the thing. It's going to be up to the government to make sure that they don't pull back subsidies too quickly, because if they do, that could be one of the surprises that does create a market crash. And what we need the government to do is they, we need them to pull back subsidies and basically incentives and things that are keeping the economy afloat in a very slow and measured fashion. And if they can do this, at the end of the day, we're going to find that a lot of Canadians end up coming out of the coronavirus pandemic with less debt, upgraded housing in a lot of cases because people have been upgrading their housing due to the fact that it is cheaper for them to do, though, do so or that they can own a bigger house right now for basically the same payments as what a 10% smaller house would have been a year ago. 
and ultimately with a post-pandemic level of relief, which should start to build the economy and the real estate market back up again down the road. Now, as interest rates start to go up down the road, are housing prices going to react accordingly? Absolutely. You know, this peak isn't going to be something that is going to last forever, but eventually when those interest rates do go up, housing prices will start to come down with them. Whether it takes a year, two years, five years, or 10 years is unknown, but expect that this whole thing, the spikes in real estate values are going to level out at some point, and that'll be largely due to interest rates going up at some point in the future. Now, are there things that could derail real estate markets? Yes, absolutely. A sudden stop in government funding could absolutely derail the real estate market. Um, a worse strain of COVID and further lockdowns and longer lockdowns could absolutely derail the economy. But for the most part, the economy seems to have found a new normal. And as long as it stays in this new normal and stays relatively stable, you can expect the real estate market's probably going to stay level or slightly positive or slightly negative. But the big increases or the big decreases that are being predicted by a lot of pundits aren't necessarily what's going to happen. They aren't necessarily something that is within the realm of reality. So until there's some huge surprise in the economy, rest assured that housing prices are probably going to be stable. There isn't going to be a huge market crash. And the only thing that will create a huge market crash is something that happens in addition to the pandemic or that's a surprise as a result of the pandemic that nobody expected. If you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And we'll see you on the very next one. Cheers.